So heading into this leg of the series, I think a lot of people uh, are wondering how you guys are doing in terms of health. I, I don't know if you have any updates from just two days ago, but um, with the long list of players, Marco, uh, Guzman, um, Nagby, Mabiala, and we know Char is out. Um, can you give us any updates on those guys? Yeah, like you said, I mean, it's, it's only two days removed. We didn't train today, we did a recovery session. Um, Chara is out for the game, um, really don't have anything else uh, concrete to tell you with regards to availability with, with any of the other guys, um, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll prepare as if uh, they're going to be out uh, uh, if they're not in training tomorrow. How, how do you feel about the depth? Obviously you guys were able to you know, bring some guys in and during that game and still grind out the result. How confident are you in your depth if potentially you know, those four guys can't go? I'm always confident, you know, no matter who I have in because I have a lot of confidence in this group and that's not just uh, one to 11, that's the entire squad. Um, and we've gotten a lot of results this year without a lot of starters. So. And, and we showed it again in this last game. So uh, no matter who's in the lineup, I know we'll uh, get a good performance and come up with a good plan and uh, find a way to win the game. And that's what it's about. It's a one-off, it's a cup final, it's a knockout at home. And uh, honestly, we, we like being at home and uh, knowing we have to win the game. Talking about that, being at home, you guys have, I believe, a six game winning streak at home, have 11 wins at home this year. Um, can you talk about why, why you've been so good at home and, and um, how that helps you going into this game? Well, I think look, look no further uh, than the environment. You know, obviously we have the best environment, I think, in, in Major League Soccer with our supporters and how loud they are and passionate. And uh, you know, that certainly fuels um, our group, spurs us on, and, uh, you know, with the opponent, I, I think, you know, it's pretty intimidating. Um, I also think just in general with our style of play, the way we play, um, um, and the pitch being fast and, and tight and, you know, when we get up on teams and get control of the game and, uh, you know, we're pushing to, to create and score and penetrate in, in an aggressive way, um, it's difficult to deal with. Uh, we have to be very mindful in this game uh, of Houston's attack though as well. So uh, we'll, we'll be aggressive like always, but we also have to be um, patient and smart in how we manage this match because, uh, you know, we know the scenarios. Um, but the only scenario that uh, we need to, to know is we need to win the game. That's the, that's the most important thing. So every game we play at home, we play to win. Um, and that's what we'll do in this game. But uh, we certainly uh, will be aware of their counterattack and we'll be aware of their good attacking players, just like we were last game. You know, last game we wanted to score a goal, wanted to win the game. We weren't able to do that, neither were they. You know, both of us take a draw. Uh, both of us wanted wins, but uh, we set up the, the final game here at home. Coach, you mentioned last week too about depth and uh, alluded to the fact that it was a major goal in the off season after what happened last season. Um, I was hoping you could elaborate that on that a little bit more. Um, just how you and Gavin work together to learn the lessons of 2016 and how you feel like those lessons or the way you solve those problems are, is evident in the team now. Well, you know, I think again, when you look at uh, um, how you build a squad in this league to be successful, cert certainly you have to have um, talented players. Um, you know, your big money guys, if you want to use that term, uh, producing. And, um, you know, uh, that's, import that's an important part of, of winning. Um, but, but for me, just as important as having uh, your complimentary, complimentary players uh, bringing to the table uh, in, in the roles that you expect uh, for them to produce and perform. Um, because there's no team in this league that, that wins with a couple good players. Um, in fact, you've seen, historically speaking, over the years, uh, a lot of teams that have uh, big money DPs, whether it's one or two, that you know, don't 
win. They're not successful because they don't get the other players right, or they don't have enough depth to manage, uh, you know, the the 34 game season. And um, you know, our philosophy in building a roster is we build it with. Uh, a group of players that buy into a team concept and of course we're going to have the Diego Valeris who you know are your bigger money guys that, that we're going to need to produce and score goals um, you know I think Blanco we hit on this year you know he, he was a guy that uh, we brought in to produce goals and he's done that um, you know and, and, and last year it's no secret we had some bigger money guys that didn't do that um, but uh, and going and going further on that team concept, um, the way we play, we need 11 guys on the pitch that are all defending and all uh, play, playing in a way that we need them to play and not just you know playing as an individual. And so it's a real balance there. Um, and, and then going back to the depth, you need guys like Roy Miller and Lawrence Olam, Moby Kugo and, and you know, uh, Dyron Spria. You need those guys because uh, you're going to have injuries. It happens in this league. So... Um, last year, when we had injuries, we couldn't get the job done, you know, and uh, those, a lot of those guys that we put in to get the job done as depth pieces, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't keep. Uh, and that allowed us to bring in Roy Miller and Lawrence Olam and some of these other guys. So I think, uh, you know, when you look at solving last year, you see a Blanco coming in and producing, and not just producing, but also defending and, and working hard and being a team guy. A team player. Uh, when you see a Lawrence and a Roy who've come in, played a lot of games, they've gotten the job done. Um, you know, so I think that's where we got it right. It's it's that simple. It's everything I said at the end of the year, and, and we solved those problems. You mentioned all of those players that um, have had to take on different roles or supplementary roles. You have other players like Jake and Zarek who have been starters at some point this year. All of those players together. I mean, you've got eight or nine players we've now mentioned here. Does that at all change how you, in terms of man management, handle the squad? No, because I treat all the players the, the same. You know, whether they make two million or they make, you know, two, 20 grand. <laughs> uh, I treat everybody the same, you know, and uh, I don't have favorites. I like all my players, I respect all my players. I give all of them an opportunity to audition every day to earn the right to be picked. And if they don't be picked, uh, if they're not picked for the 11 and, the, and they're picked for the 18, they know they have to do a job when they come in. And if they do, then they're rewarded. You know, so um, you know, it's a, for me, it's it's about respecting the players, the professionals. It's about defining the roles. It's about treating them always with a, a value. Um, and uh, it's one of the first things I say to every group is, you know, there's there's no first team, second team. It's one team, and I need all of them to be successful. And we've shown that in the years that we've been successful. Last year, there were some times where that wasn't working, but a lot of those guys aren't here anymore.